Hello students, welcome to Eternal AC Education. In this session, you are going to learn Introduction to Computers. Content of this video is Generations of Computer and you are going to learn 1st Generation, 2nd Generation and 3rd Generation in this video. Before that, we will learn or recall some of the terms. What is a computer? Definition for a computer is it is an electronic device that processes the input according to the set of instructions provided to it and gives the desired output at a very fast rate. So first point it is an electronic device. Why it is an electronic device? Because it needs power for its function. Whether it is a desktop or a laptop we need the power supply for its functioning so it's an electronic device second point computer is doing the process for what it will take the instructions and do the process to the given input and give the desired output at a very fast rate input process output user is going to give the input computer is going to do the process and it is going to give the output the process is based on the instructions and the process will take in a very fast rate so computer is very useful for doing a calculation in a very fast manner so what are the points computer is electronic device next point it will process the input given by the user according to the instruction and it will give the desired output and it will be in a very fast rate is it clear children next what you should know means many are having this doubt computer is a hardware or software do you know the answer it is an electronic device so it is a hardware is it clear but it is useless without the software because whenever we buy a computer as after we switch on we'll wait for the window screen am i right 98 percentage of india are using windows that means the operating system of after seeing the start button only we will say ok my computer is working well, after switching on the computer if you are not able to see the screen means we will say my computer is not working right so we need a software for its function we can't use computer just buying as an electronic device we need to install the required software so as per the terminology computer is a hardware but we cannot use without the software so being a computer science student you must be clear with the concept which is hardware and which is software is it clear children now we are going to learn the generations of computer based on various stages of development computers can be categorized into different generations as per the book we are having first second third fourth fifth and sixth generations what is generation do you know the 4G and 5G as the generations 4G as soon as I say the word 4G you will remember your mobile yes my sim is, or my phone is supporting 4G what about 5G why it is upgraded to 4G from 3G 3G means the speed of data transfer is very less 4G means the speed of data transfer is high so 5G means we are expecting 1 gigabytes of data transfer per second so we are waiting for the 5G technology that is mobile technology that means here also in our computer based on the components there is a generation gap what are they let's see so first generation 1940 to 1956 the component used is vacuum tubes then size is big consumed more power overheat so it has small function then it used machine language what is machine language as we know english tamil french are many languages 
computer also having a language as we need the language for communicating with other people we should know language that is computer language to communicate with the computer so in your 11th standard you are going to learn a computer language c++ so before that there was a machine language c++ is a high level language that means user friendly whenever you read a line in the program you will understand and it will be in english but machine language is purely machine friendly that means do you know what language a machine can understand as it is a digitalized machine computer is a digitalized device so it can understand only 1 and 0 so it will if the program is written purely with 1 0 combination then it is said to be machine language if in your generation if you are asked to learn machine language no one will learn because of its toughness then there are some examples given here ENIAC ADVAC UNIVAC these are our computer names which are used in the first generation period see the weight 27 ton and the capacity is 8 feet into 100 feet into 3 feet it's more than a room size i'll show you the picture this is the first generation computer eniac electronic numerical integrated and computer in the year of 1946 this whole room size is occupying the computer next is the second generation the period is 1956 to 64 the component used is transistors as the vacuum tubes are replaced by transistors the size is smaller than first generation and the heat produced also less power consumed also less then they used punched cards then batch processing multi programming i will explain these things what is punched cards what is batch processing and what is multi programming then as i explained machine language is machine ma- friendly so combination of zero and one alone now they introduced the assembly language that means in the assembly language along with the 10 there is a combination of number and the english word with the length of three letter or four letter not more than that so, somewhat easier than the machine language and the examples are ibm 10401 then ibm 1620 then UNIVAC 1108 these are the example computers used in second generation we'll see the pictures now so this is UNIVAC second generation computer then this is IBM 401 and this is IBM 1620 these example names will come for one word this is the punched card can you see the punches here gap or the space like our punch machine nowadays our punch machines are in round shape but here can you see a rectangle shape there is a procedure for punching and based on this they communicated the data or the communicated the information it's one of our technology next batch processing batch processing means set of instructions will be given this operating system that is our windows now but before that the operating system will be different but anyhow the working principle of operating system is same what is the working principle of operating system it is the intermediate between the user and the machine so Uh, i'll stop with this line because i uh, we are going to learn what is operating system in detail in your fourth chapter so as per now you know os is operating system it is the intermediate between the user and the machine so this operating system will do the job as a batch that means as a group likewise the instruction is given this is one example for batch processing so you have seen this in 
national geographic channel you can see many food factory they will show how it is packed like here the machine is doing batch processing group as a group they are doing the task next one is multi programming multi programming means if more than one program store in the main memory at the same time if one job needs to wait cpu switch to the another job then the first job finishes waiting cpu will get back to the first job i'll explain with the diagram see here it's the secondary storage what is storage it's a place where the data is are stored even the instructions are stored here the data is uh, instructions and data in the secondary memory that is a storage we are going to see what is storage in detail so have just the idea in the storage place the instructions are there then cpu has to execute the instructions so it is having four job second job is in execution then first job is communication with the secondary storage then third and fourth are in waiting mode so as it is in waiting mode it is doing the execution as soon as its second job execution is over it takes the uh, control over the first job or it will take the content over the job 3 so it will do the multi programming multitasking we may see that it is doing concurrently but it is doing one by one by using its time scheduling algorithm is it clear if there are many job if one instruction is given for example think that you are uh, you are printing a uh, printing a letter from the microsoft word using a printer you have typed the letter and just you are pressing the button print uh, selecting the option print you the content is given to the printer am i right the printer is printing okay same time if you are working with the excel file or if you are hearing some music the printer will print the music will play both is happening that is multi programming but cpu is only one person it is taking the uh, algorithm in algorithm means the procedure in a such a manner that it will do the task while printing while the content is moving to the printer memory in this gap it will play the song while it's printing the next line will come but for us we cannot uh, take the uh, time delay that means we cannot notice the time delay but it will happens it is the internal process it's a third generation example we'll see what is third generation first third generation it is 1964 to 1971 here the components used are integrated circuits then computers are very smaller than second generation consumed very less power than second generation then introduction of high level language that means user friendly language is introduced in the third generation here are the examples for third generations ibm 360 hannibal 6000 series so this is hannibal 6000 of 80 next this is ibm 360 third generation computer so in this video we have learned first generation second generation and third gen first first generation component vacuum tube second generation transistor third generation integrator circuits highlight point its big in size more consumed more power machine language third one less than first generation less heat less power and four concept one is punched card next one is batch processing next one is multi programming next one is introduction of assembly language then in third generation uh, smaller than second less power then introduction of high level language and you must learn this example computer name for one word purpose so it will come for the one word that's all for this session children learn well thank you have a good day